The accused Philip McDowell has been employed by the bank for 23 years since he was 17. Do you mind if I look at my records? No, please do. Yes, that is correct. And he's been at the King Street branch of the bank, of which you are a manager for five years. Yes, that would be right. He's married with two children, aged 16 and 13. Um, <coughs> yes, Robert and Alison. And it's true to say, is it not, that all his years at the bank were years of devoted service, not a blot on your records? That would have been true, yes. A model employee. I think we would have liked him to have been a little more ambitious. But within the limitations of his ability, yes, it would be fair to describe him as a model employee. Whom you sacked without notice on the 18th of September of last year. Sir, McDowell was dismissed quite lawfully because he was absent without leave and without lawful justification. On and from Monday the uh, 10th, of September. Uh, my Lord, I have already explained this. I am right, am I not, Mr. Gerard, when I say that you have formed the view that Mr. McDowell is guilty of the offence with which he is charged, and that that is why you sacked him, and that is why you are pretending that he was absent without leave, when in fact you specifically agreed to him taking another week's holiday at that time. It is for the jury to decide whether a man is guilty. I have a quite open mind. You do know what offence he is charged with. I do, sir. He is charged with abducting a 14-year-old girl, a Miss Fiona Sumner. And it was because you had jumped to the conclusion that he was guilty that you sacked him. Oh, my lord, that would have been wholly inappropriate. I was not aware of the existence of the young lady at the time the letter of dismissal was sent to McDowell. You say that when you dismissed my client, you were not even aware that Miss Fiona Sumner existed? Do you read the Fulchester Gazette? I do. Will you take a look at this, please? Now, that is the Fulchester Gazette for Tuesday, the 11th of September. Will you look at it, please? Now, did you not see that newspaper? My Lord, I don't read the local newspapers every day. It just depends whether I have time. I have to give priority to the financial journals, you see. Mr. Gerard, is that newspaper delivered to your house every day? Yes. But you say that you did not see that particular issue. You are married, are you not? I am. And you yourself have a 15-year-old daughter, do you not? Yes, I do. And you say that no one, not even your wife, told you about the missing 14-year-old child or showed you that newspaper? My Lord, uh, I think I must correct some of my evidence. I must have known about the girl. Must have known? You mean you did? Y yes, that must have been so. Must have been? Was. You knew perfectly well. I'd like to explain, if I may, my Yes, Lord. Mr. Gerard. Well, as I've said, McDowell withdrew from his account on uh, Friday the 7th of September everything except five pounds. I knew that. That's why his mortgage repayments fell into arrears. There was another instalment due on the Monday. Mr. Gerard, I asked you a very simple question. I'd like to explain in my own way, if I may, my Mr. Lord. Gerard. Oh, do let him go on, Mr. Golding. Yes, Mr. Gerard. Well, when McDowell didn't come in to work on the Monday, I telephoned Mrs. McDowell. But she said her husband wasn't there. Did she say where he was? Not at first, no. She was evasive. But later in the week, I telephoned her every day. She said she had no idea where her husband was and that he had been missing since Sunday afternoon. And then there was the newspaper report about the missing girl. Well, I didn't put the two together at first, and not until about the following Tuesday, after the girl had been found. I telephoned Mrs. McDowell again, but she wasn't there. I spoke to the son, Robert, who said that his father was back, but that his mother and sister had left home. And you jumped to the conclusion after this telephone call that McDowell had, in fact, abducted Fiona Sun. Well... Yes, to be honest, I, I am on oath. Yes, I did think so. You did think so. And what did you think of his actions? I thought it was disgusting. You thought it was disgusting. Now, let's get back to his so-called absence without leave. And Mr. McDowell is entitled to four and a half weeks holiday a year. Yeah, please answer the question, Mr. Gerard. It's so easy to misunderstand, Jesters. I'm sorry, my lord. The answer to your last question is yes, sir. Yes, and my client took his family to Wales at the beginning of August of last year? He did. Returning to work on Monday the 13th of August? Uh, yes. 
but he still had over two and a half weeks' holiday in hand. Yes, that would be correct. And on Monday, the 3rd of September, he saw you in your office about taking another week's holiday. No, sir. I suggest that he did. I suggest that he asked for another week off and that you agreed. That is untrue, sir. Mr. Gerard, it's right, isn't it, that Mr. McDowell has a particular hobby, vintage cars. In fact, he owns a 1930 Austin 7, doesn't he? I have no record of Oh, that. dear, dear, Mr. Lloyd, is it disputed that the accused has an old car as a hobby? Ah, uh, no, my lord. In indeed, it is an integral part of the prosecution case that the accused is interested in and has such a car. It is a car that could perhaps be described as the uh, getaway vehicle. Well, well, I once owned an Austin 7. I must say I never thought I should ever hear anyone refer to such a motor car as a getaway vehicle. Well, let's get on. Uh, my lord. Mr. Gerard, when Mr. McDowell came to see you in your office, he told you that he wanted the next week off because he was going to try and better the time a friend had taken to drive in another Austin 7 from Fulchester to John O'Groats. There was no such conversation. This is the first I've heard of a race to John O'Groats. Mr. Gerard, either you are deliberately lying or you've in fact convinced yourself that what you say is the truth. But the fact is that you have developed a disgust for my client, to use your own words. And for that reason, you are trying to give my client's absence from work a sinister appearance when in fact it was wholly innocent and with your agreement. Mr. Gerard, you've said that the accused had a good work record. Well, did he in fact appear to take a great interest in his work or did he simply do what was required of him but no more? The latter, I'd say, a strictly nine-to-five man. I suppose that's why he never really got very far. A man of his age ought to have been, well, at least an assistant manager. Yes. Now, you've told us that on Friday the 7th of September, the accused withdrew some money from his account. Now, was the account, in fact, the joint account of himself and his wife? Yes, that is correct. And how much did he draw out? £250, everything except £5 and a few pence. One last matter, Mr. Gerard. You were asked by my learned friend about uh, telephone calls that you made to the Q's home, and you've told us that on one occasion you spoke to his son, who said that his father was at home. When was that telephone call? That was the Tuesday. It would be Tuesday, the 18th of September. Uh, yes, my lord, that would be it. Did you ask to speak to the accused? I did. Robert put the phone down and went away. When he came back, he said his father couldn't come to the telephone. Couldn't come to the telephone? Yes, sir. And you say the accused wife has left him? Well, that's what the son told me over the phone, that his mother and sister had left home. Uh, but I see Mrs. McDowell is in the court. Yes, I see. Thank you, Mr. Gerard. Have you any questions, my lord? Uh, good morning. I call Mrs. Sumner. Sarah Sumner, please. Uh, my lord, may I ask if Mr. Gerard can be released? He has some very pressing engagements. Oh, yes, I'm sure he has. Yes, he can go. Thank you, my lord. What is your religion? Church of England. Take the Bible in your right hand and read aloud the words on the card. I swear by Almighty God that the evidence I shall give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Mrs. Sumner, what is your full name? Sarah Elizabeth Sumner. And where do you live? 41 Stapleton Avenue. Fulchester. Yes. You are a widow, are you not, Mrs. Sumner, but you have a daughter, Fiona? Yes, that is correct. How old is she? Fourteen. Uh, do you have any other children? No. Where does Fiona attend school? At uh, Fulchester Comprehensive. Well, there being just the two of us, I always thought it better to send her to day school. Hmm. When did Fiona's autumn term begin? On September the 10th. And did she attend school that day? No. Why not? She had vanished the afternoon before on the Sunday. It was awful when it, when it got dark and she hadn't come home. I waited until about 11 o'clock and then I telephoned the police. When did she return? On the Thursday. The 13th? Yes. I was quite desperate by then. It, it was 6 o'clock in the evening and the doorbell rang and I thought it must be someone with some news. I went to the door and, and it was Fiona. She more or less fell into my arms. She was so tired. It must have been a tremendous relief. Oh, yes. And the police had been looking for her on Treppingham Common, dragging ponds, everything. Was Fiona's disappearance a surprise to you? A surprise? Well, of course it was. Do you and Fiona have a close relationship? Very close. I suppose it's because of her not having a father. So far as you know, did Prion, uh, Fiona, prior to her disappearance, know McDowell at all? 
Well, like me, she may have said hello once or twice, but that would be all. I'm afraid you can't tell us what uh, Fiona told you when she came home, but you could perhaps tell us about her appearance. Or just what I saw. Mm -hmm. Well, she, she'd been crying. Um, she was soaked through. And when I undressed her to give her her bath, I noticed there were, there were marks, bruises on her wrists, as though someone had been gripping them hard. A and on her legs. I put her to bed, and, and she slept for about ten hours. And then she had something to eat, and then she slept for another ten. Now, you say that Fiona, prior to her disappearance, wouldn't have known McDowell any better than you, and you, at the most, had a nodding acquaintance with him. Yes. Uh, may she be shown the bundle of photographs? Yes. Uh, this is uh, Exhibit uh, 2, my lord. Mm -hmm. Will you look at the photographs, Mrs Sumner? Do you recognise the girl in the photographs? Yes, yes, of course, it's Fiona. Yes, and as we can see, the man is the accused. Now, so far as you know, was there any occasion prior to her disappearance when those photographs could have been taken? No. No, they must have been taken whilst she was away.